Hey everyone, as I've mentioned a couple times, I made this channel because I wanted to get information out there that would help my fellow collectors that I might have insight into as from being in the professional toy field. And I recently made a video about kind of the death rattle of toys, how often product that is canceled by retail for one reason or another winds up somehow caught in production with no place to go. The textbook example of this is that last wave of Indiana Jones 3 and 3 fourth product. I mean, it's, per it's a perfect example. It would have been the next wave at retail. It was in retail packaging. The movie underperformed. We're talking about Crystal Skull. And uh, the only way to do something with this was to sell to Comic-Con, directly to collectors. So <laughs> that's, it, that's what happens. And if retail backs off because, you know, in this case, the movie didn't do well, then anything in production, you ideally try to find a home for it. Now, sometimes it's easy, you have a full wave and you can pack it up and send it to a convention. This isn't always true. It doesn't always work that way. That's kind of like uh, if you're super lucky. Now, as to why does this happen? Well, I think actually, as I've noted in a few videos, the whole toy making process is a sort of three year timeline. So even anything being looked at right now in February, 2023, we're well in the way of working in 2025 product. So yes, a retailer who puts stuff on clearance and cancels a line sort of in the middle of a season or, you know, at, you know, in the middle of product shipping, a lot of that product could still be in production and now no longer has a home. Ah, so there we go. That's the, uh, you know, ace of spades right there. No channel pun intended. Here's something we really want. We know it exists. There's a photo of it. So why can't a company get it to collectors? I mean, there's collector direct, you know, stores, Big Bad Toy Store, Entertainment Earth. They do have pre-orders for a whole bunch of, you know, collector lines. Wouldn't they be the perfect option? The thing is, you have to look at this situation like Spock. By that, I mean devoid of emotion. And it's hard to look at things that we're really emotionally attached to that way. In fact, think of, say, that Randor figure as a piece of rotting fruit. I know it's tough to see something we really want as something negative like that, but a piece of rotting fruit can infect other pieces of fruit. And each of these pieces of fruit, say, represents a brand. So a toy company wants to get rid of this as soon as possible because like fruit rotting, inventory that sits around costs money, like a lot of money. And the more inventory you have sitting around, the more it costs. Sometimes the logistics to rework inventory to sell it to Comic-Con or to a online collector retailer, unfortunately, requires more effort than just shipping it out by the pallet to a discount channel. And that's what often happens, because even though there might be collector appeal, you need a market large enough to absorb the full order. And that's also why international markets sometimes absorb canceled product, because they represent a large enough space that they can. This is what happened with Titus and Megator back in 1987, why uh, they only showed up in Europe, because U.S. retailers stopped taking Motu figures, but they were already in production. So Europe became the place to ship them to. A great example of this recently was this Boba Fett figure. Well, this was 2012, so I guess maybe 10 years ago, but this is the only modern Star Wars figure I don't have, because it only shipped to Canada because it came out at the tail end between assortments and movies, and yeah, it's an existing Boba Fett figure, and all he has is a piece of string now attached to his backpack. What can I say? I'm new hat when it comes to original trilogy Star Wars 3 and 3 fourth. And this is the only one I never got, because it only shipped to Canada. So hey, if you're Canadian and have one, want to make a deal or, or trade, contact me. Okay, I know, I'm like completely off topic at this point. Let's get back to where toys go when they don't have a home. So aside from international markets and aside from discount, mar discount sellers, there's also a lot of toy companies run their own shops. Mattel has two, they have one in El Segundo, one in East Aurora. Uh, they may have some others, but, and I know they're not everywhere. I know it's not like, you know, Target and Walmart, but this is where a lot of product winds up going. I had a whole line of modifiers figures show up only at the Mattel toy store that I worked on, the uh, Quick Changers line. I'll have to do a whole video about that. It's the only place they were ever sold. Now, these stores do become bigger during the holidays as tents, but they're always open to the public. And honestly, if you're looking for canceled toys, this is the place to go. And I know, yeah, you've got to be like in LA or East Aurora, but you know, that's 
it is out there. I mean, and we know like huge amounts of Motu origins have already shown up there over the years, especially when they were locked into the Walmart contract when the line launched and couldn't send product to any other U.S. retailers, and Walmart was already full from wave one. So all this other product it could only be sold at the Mattel toy store. That's, you know, again, why, and it's used, used as that vehicle to sell off product like this that can't find a home at retail. So, yeah, I know. You look at this, you're like, it exists. If they would just ship it to me, I'll give them my money. But you have to look at it from a business perspective, and, you know, they're going to want to put energy into what makes the best revenue. It's that whole, you know, is the juice worth the squeeze? And, you know, we're talking about this Motu figure, we're talking about Mattel, then, you know, if they put energy into Hot Wheels or Barbie or Fisher Price versus the energy it would take to make sure these pallets got to collectors somehow or the line, you know, et cetera, et cetera, you can see where where the money is. It's, it's putting it into bigger brands that are better sellers that are going to sell through and don't involve inventory piling up. So that's what it is. It's detaching emotionally and realizing getting rid of inventory as fast as humanly possible is what these companies need to do. I hope this video clarified, and if you enjoyed it, please do share with others. It's the best way to show support for this channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.